And you'll notice we've just made, what is this? Oh, 90,000 pounds, 100,000 pounds. We now have 100,000 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, just from moving a template around on a map. That's really something. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, the original. That's right, this is the game. We're not playing the updated modern open source version, which runs in HD. No, this is the actual game. Now, before you click off of this monstrosity for having graphics that are as about as appealing as a potato wearing makeup can be, you should know that this game is actually majestic, and even though graphically it might not be the sharpest tool in the shed, it is still one of the best games ever made, and also, it's perfectly balanced, and has no exploits whatsoever. I mean, come on, this game was released in 2002. It's 18 years old. Technically, this game can go to a pub and buy a pint if it really wanted to, so surely this game has no issues. There's no way an exploit could exist in this game. Game 18 years after release, right? Oh god. <laughs> I've got some interesting things to share, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what if I told you, ladies and gentlemen, we could create a theme park? But it's a theme park with a twist. It's a park of fun and joy, but it does come with one slight drawback. And that drawback is that you can never leave. That's right, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be showing off how to get infinite money, infinite park rating, but most importantly, we're going to make it so that our guests can never leave the park once they've arrived. It's simple, it's fun, and it's stupid, but most importantly, there's no escape. So get ready to hand over your existence privilege cards, because we're about to keep you trapped in a land of fun and enjoyment. And trust me, it's a land of mandatory fun and enjoyment. Now, of course, before I share them, there are a couple of things I want to mention. Number one, this game is absolutely great fun, but of course, pretty clunky to run on modern systems. I'm running my copy off of Steam. But also, when you load up the game, you'll notice that there are actually no settings to alter anything about the game in the main menu. You actually have to be on a level in order to, say, edit the sound levels of this. And this is uh, normally not a problem, but allow me to play the main menu music of Roller Coaster Tycoon and what I can currently hear blasting my ears continuously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Jesus Christ, the screams. It's like a terrifying horror ride and none of the audio makes sense. Oh, God, it's horrible. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, and that's why I play the Roller Coaster Tycoon games about audio. Now, of course, before we jump into Roller Coaster Tycoon, there's a couple of things I want to mention first. This game was released on October the 3rd, 2002. But number two, this game was created by the legendary Chris Sawyer. This man went on to make Transport Tycoon, my favorite game of all time, as well as Locomotion, Sid Meier's Railroad Tycoon. He's done so much, and it's all been fantastic. And of course, according to legend, he made over $30 million, and currently currently flies around on a jet made of solid 24 karat gold just for kicks using only the power of his own ridiculous wealth to counteract the effects of gravity. That is actual canon of the lovely and beautiful Chris Sawyer. And also before you say that this website is completely bogus, this is actually IGN. Okay, this is a legitimate IGN article. Oh god, the internet used to be different back then. So welcome into Roller Coaster Tycoon. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be creating a lovely park. A park which defies logic and just everything and is a completely and utterly balanced park which I will of course make using perfectly legitimate means with no questionable game design balance issues. So let's begin. We're going to start a brand new game in a park which I've actually pre-prepared. This is the legendary park of Spiftopia. It's just a barren and empty plot with one objective. Reach a farm value of £300,000 within three years. Now that is quite a challenge, especially considering that the park is literally just a barren donut of green grass in the middle of nowhere. This lovely park of Spiftopia has nothing. It's not even open, ladies and gentlemen. The entire thing is closed. So we have £10,000. Let's set about actually making some money. Famously, the best way to make money is to build out a couple of pathways, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And then we're going to actually have to start putting a few things on these pathways, like say the legendary spiral slide. Yeah, people love the spiral slide. They best bloody love the spiral slide. I'm spending money putting it here. So yeah, this here is going to be our first ever ride, ladies and gentlemen. It's not much, it's very small, and it's basically garbage. If We can actually take a look at its statistics, but it provides almost no excitement, no intensity, and basically no nausea, meaning it's not the best. But people will still spend £1.50 riding the bloody spiral slide. So I'm sure we'll make our money back, but oh no, we're down to £9,000. Oh god, come on, we need to make more money, and fast. Now, of course, man cannot survive off of just 
spiral slide alone, and so for that reason we must provide them with park amenities, like the cotton candy stall here. Which you might notice, the cotton candy stall is a terrifying face, reminiscent of the expression human beings make right before the moment where I harvest their organs. Please remember, ladies and gentlemen, 2002 was a completely different time for games design, and consequently, 90% of the things you're going to see here are absolutely terrifying. Now, in true 2002 style as well, we start out the game without actually having toilets researched, meaning guests can only come into the park for a brief period of time and get food and drink, but uh, we actually don't have any way for them to go to the toilet. Now, one thing I can do is I can actually open the park, and I might as well, because, you know, what's the worst that could happen? It's the 17th of March, we've got our first drink stall down, our legendary cotton candy stall, and most importantly, the spiral slide is there. You will notice, though, we will start immediately losing money, about £58 per week, just from existing, thanks to annoying things like maintenance. Now, of course, in order to make money, you need rides, which you can then charge people for actually entering. In our case, we can say charge Carmella here for getting into the spiral slide. Why don't you get in, get on the spiral slide? You're not getting on it while it's raining. God damn it. Why wouldn't you use the spiral slide when it's raining? It's perfectly fine. If anything, it makes it extra slidey. These people are so judgmental. Fine, you leave me no choice. I'll have to pull out the big guns. The most powerful ride in all of Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. The Italian police ride. I have no idea what this is. Why does it exist? But yes, this is the Italian police ride. Finally, the perfect ride. Right, let's actually find a way of getting people onto the Italian police ride. Perfect. And now let us open the Italian police ride up for the public to enjoy. What the heck is the Italian police ride? It's just, I don't understand how it's Italian. I can see why it's policey, okay, because you've got three police officers there, but what does this have to do with Italians? Anyway, people still aren't going on the spiral ride, even though it's not raining, so why is that? I want to go on something more thrilling than spiral ride one. What's more thrilling than bloody spiral ride? You want something more thrilling than police ride one? Oh my god, these people want thrilling entertainment sources. Well, that's something we're just going to have to try and provide. All right, in order to really get people excited, I've got a brand new thrill ride. This is the twist machine, and hopefully it is more thrilling than all of the other rides and we'll get people on. No, it's still not that thrilling. Oh god, we're gonna lose all of our money. We're down to £7,696. Fine, this game is going to force me to pull out all of the stops to exploit this game. So far, no one has used Sparrow Slide, no one has been on the twist, and no one has been on the Italian police ride. I do not even understand why people are here. We have 65 guests in the park and the approval rating is at 780 and just look at them walking back and forth. They're, they're here, but they don't want to go on any of the rides. Oh, brilliant. So, we actually need a ride which people will want to go on. Logically, that means we need a roller coaster. Something like, say, this boomerang coaster. The only issue is its costs will generally range from at least £6,750, meaning we would almost go bankrupt building this bad boy. So, we need a solution. We need to make money without having money. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to need one simple thing. Now, in order to actually destroy this game's balance, we're going to need one simple thing, ladies and gentlemen. You'll have seen this incredible object at work in the fantastic film that is Shrek 1 and Shrek 2, and that fantastical thing is Swamp. You see, Swamp in Roller Coaster Tycoon has absolutely no balancing whatsoever. For some reason, it is an infinite source of money, and it makes absolutely no sense. And so for that reason alone, we're going to be exploiting it. But of course, in order to exploit the Swamp, we must first own the Swamp. And so we must spend £400 a month researching Swamps. I know, it's incredible. I'll be back to you as soon as we've actually researched it. Oh, and bam, I've jumped into the midpoint of the video. When you were least expecting me, I know. To tell you that the psychotropics which I've added to your tea should be taking effect any time now, meaning that your compulsion to like the video will be increased by 700,000%. Equally, you'll be filled with an internal obligation to comment down below just how much you love this Biftopia Park, and why when you last visited you in no way felt threatened at any moment when you were there. Remember, you legally must specify at no point you felt threatened riding any of the death traps, sorry I mean roller coasters, I've created. Thank you very much. Now back to the video. Oh and fantastic, our research has just finally finished and we finally unlocked the thing which we were looking for. Creepy theming ladies and gentlemen, I know. You see, in your park you can theme it however you like. Each additional bit of theming you add can increase the excitement of a ride for example. This tree adds a little bit more excitement to this lovely little raving rocket ride which I've built. But there's one piece of scenery which is more powerful than anything else, and that is the 
incredible swamp goo. You see, the swamp goo behaves like no other bit of scenery, especially when placed in a unique way. See, we're going to leave the game running, but we're going to place down 15 bits of swamp goo on top of each other. So far, we've placed four bits of swamp goo, so then we place five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and that's 15 bits of swamp goo all stacked on top of each other. Then go do the same to the tile next to it. There we go. That's 15 bits of swamp goo, and then the same again. Oh no, we've actually run out of cash. Okay, we're going to have to take a loan here. Right, there we go. We've taken out a loan of four grand. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. So yep, yeah, you just hold down the shift key and place down 15 layers of swamp goo like so. There we go. And there we have a line of four bits of swamp goo. Perfect. Now once you have that, you can simply build a roller coaster. It can be any kind of roller coaster, but in our case, I'm going to use the nice, simple wooden coaster design. And once again, you want to get yourself over to your first bit of swamp goo, hold down the shift and levitate your way up to the top of the swamp goo and place down your first track piece. Then immediately continue building the track and then once you get to this end, simply curve it round like so and just make it the shortest ride you feasibly can. There we go and just loop straight on back in. Perfect. Now all we need is an entrance to be added as well as an exit to be added over here. And this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is actually a perfectly finished ride. This is a legitimate ride which people could enjoy and in fact we're going to do a little test right now to see just how much people would enjoy riding this lovely wooden roller coaster. Come on, we've got 118 people in the park. Surely they'd love to give this bad boy a try. Just look at how amazing it is. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, it looks terrible. It really does. It's just a platform suspended on 15 layers of swamp goo. But apparently that's also going to sell. Ah, yes, there we go. These are the statistics for the ride. Excitement, very low. Intensity, even lower than that. Nausea, even lower than that. Average speed, four miles an hour. It's terrible, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to be honest, this is the worst roller coaster in existence. But it's also the most profitable. Because you see, all we need to do is drop down a save for this roller coaster. So what we're going to do is hold down the save button and save this track design with scenery and make sure it selects all nearby scenery and then hit save. And what you'll notice is that this means in all future iterations of this ride, it will be placed down with the inclusion of the swamp goo. So let's hit save. Now let's give it a fun name. I think calling it one cheaty ride is a perfect description. Perfect. There we have it. Now that we have our ride built, all we need to do is quite simply delete it. There we go. Demolish it and get our money back. Oh, and it actually keeps the swamp goo around. Well, that's fine. We can tidy that up. There we go. We've deleted the swamp goo and you'll notice we're just under £5,000, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I've got some good news for you because once I'm done with this exploit, we can have a whole lot more than that. What you're going to want to do is go to your ride selection and get wooden roller coaster selected. Now, make sure to select the ride which we've just created, the number one cheaty ride, and this is where the exploit begins. We'll start moving this ride around and you'll notice that a strange quantity of grey goop is being left on the map. And this grey goop makes no sense because it's not necessarily part of the ride, it just kind of appears and it's stuck there. It's stuck there forever. This is the swamp goo, which for some reason spreads from beyond its actual existence into the template of the ride, and then it escapes from the template of the ride and leaves a physical lasting impact on on the actual world. This exploit is completely dumb. I have no idea how it actually made it into the game, but it's here and it works. So yes, you'll notice we're painting this lovely gooey ground everywhere and it's made a bit of a mess. Now, if we were to select a different ride, which has a similar amount of actual world pieces added to it, like say this ride here, you'll notice the world pieces like say the tiling and the pathways don't actually stick behind. This is because this is an actual real roller coaster, whereas the number one cheaty roller coaster is just a cursed swamp. But the advantages of having a cursed swamp as a roller coaster is that cursed swamps are actually exceedingly valuable. You see, just one tile of this cursed bit of swamp sells for £28. This is pretty unique because that means we could select this big chunk here and sell it for £2,000. And now if we just remove all of the swamp tiles which we've just summoned into reality by moving a template around and you'll notice we've just made, what is this? Oh, £90,000, £100,000. We now have £100,000 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, just from moving a template around on a map. That's really something. Although you will notice our park value is still only 31,000 pounds because there's no real world value to anything in this park. At the moment, it is just a case of pathways and one ride. So now we actually need to find a way of exploiting the park value in order to gain not only more guests in our park, but also more importantly, so that we can immediately win this game. So how are we going to build a very high value roller coaster? Well, for that, you're going to want a brand new Heartline Twister Coaster. And we're going to make a custom design, ladies.
ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's going to be brilliant. So let's simply build a nice long station. That's looking perfect. Now, what you're going to want to do with this lovely Heartline roller coaster is simply mash down a whole bunch of rotating spinny stuffs. You're going to want Heartline rolls left, so you're going to want Heartline rolls right. And as soon as you get to the end of your level, simply do an upper transfer and go back on yourself and do even more continuous rolling. There we go. Just keep this lovely roller coaster rolling. Don't let it stop. It's going to be a very long roller coaster, but trust me, it's going to be worth it. Now, the reason we did the first exploit to get infinite money was simply so that we could have enough money to build this monstrosity, because whilst it's not the biggest roller coaster in existence, it's certainly quite expensive. Anyway, there we go. Perfect. We've hit the end of the line, so we're just going to do a lower transfer now and loop our way back like so. Perfect. And perfect. There we go. We've managed to build the ultimate ride. So let's add in a little entrance and an exit. Oh, and it's beautiful. Look at it. Oh, it's truly majestic. The Heartline Twister Coaster 1. No, 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 that won't do. Let's rename this bad boy. So this is my brand new roller coaster. The most exciting thing since tea bags. Legitimately, trust me, they were a really exciting invention. So let's get this roller coaster built. All it needs is a little line to get people queuing and a little pathway for people to exit. And now that we have that sorted, we need to actually just do a simple test of this roller coaster. Now, this test run is going to take a very long time uh, for good reason. You might wonder why that is. Well, it's because this ride is going to take for literal ever. You'll notice that this entire ride is a very slowly looping cart, which just is continuously flipping itself over and over again. And then it goes all the way back on itself and then it has to go all the way back to the station. This is going to take effectively forever to do. And whilst it's busy doing its little run, I'm going to start decorating the scenery. Of course, the greatest piece of decoration of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's bloody Mr. Bones. Look at him. He's the greatest little happy skeleton you've ever seen. And he's yours for only £55. Look at him. It's Bone World, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, yes. Welcome to the Bone Zone. Now, how else might this game be ahead of its time, you might wonder? Well, allow me to demonstrate. I see this game was one of the first games to actually allow players to break the Geneva Convention by letting players mess around with their actual park guests and also water. Now, most people will play a game like, say, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 because they want to make people happy. They want to give their guests a lovely experience in their park and they want to see people actually enjoy their glorious creations. Like, say, Daniel P here. What's Daniel P's thoughts? You think the scenery is great, but you want to go on something more thrilling. Well, Daniel, I'll show you something more thrilling than the Wild Rockets. It's called the Shark Tank. It's our latest addition to the park and you'll notice that it, yes, it has just killed you, Daniel P. That's because Roller Coaster Tycoon literally allows you to pick up guests and drop them into a vat of water. Oh no, Daryl here is drowning. Daryl is now dead. The great thing about it is it's not limited to your park guests. You can also murder your staff. God, it's just like Disneyland. <laughs> Remember, they signed a non-disclosure agreement, so they can't even talk about how I dropped them into the shark tank. There we go, perfect. I've added some fresh souls to the shark tank here. Goodbye, my friends. This will teach you for going into the park and not actually going on any of the rides. Yeah, sure, it's free entry, but free entry if you're willing to spend your soul. How's my roller coaster doing? Uh, the ride's seriously not back yet. Nope, they're still going. Yep, cart number one is traveling at one miles an hour. Uh, it's going to be a little while before we see the results of our test run. Oh god. But as soon as we get the results, then we can open up the ride. Now the thing is, Roller Coaster Tycoon is genuinely one of the greatest tycoon games of all time and roller coaster games as well. Sure, nowadays we have the incredible games like, say, Planet Coaster and, um, no, I'm not going to say Roller Coaster Tycoon World. No, that game was actually very very much garbage. But Planet Coaster is an incredible game which does follow on from many of the successes of this game. But equal, if you want to go back and revisit some of the nostalgia, you can actually get yourself a copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon for free in the form of Open RCT2 or Open Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's an open source version of this game and it even comes equipped with HD graphics, 4K support and even working multiplayer. It's genuinely incredible. It gets regular updates and it's well worth your time and heck, if you're in the community and you're still out there playing Roller Coaster Tycoon, give me a shout in the comment section. I'd love to know how many of you are still out there because this game has many happy memories for me. I mean, of course, actually going back and playing it now, I'm amazed that these very basic graphics to me at the time were so beautiful and creative and so captivating. But certainly back then, we didn't exactly expect much from video games in terms of graphics. This game was incredible. Of course, in modern game standards, this isn't even the level of graphical quality you'd expect in a mobile game. 
And I think that just kind of shows how incredible the entire market has moved on. Anyway, the most exciting thing since Teabags is about to actually have its first car arrive back at the station. And as soon as that happens, we'll get the results from our test. And I'm sure you'll find the results very interesting. See, normally rides like, say, the Raving Rockets here, it actually has a pretty decent excitement rating of 5.14. This is rated as being high. Yes, that's right. This is a high level of excitement. Our ride, however, is going to have a much higher excitement rating than just 5.14. You can trust me on that. And the test results are back, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, the most exciting thing since T uh, is rated as having an excitement of 655. This is insane. This is because effectively this ride is technically broken. It doesn't work in a way which rides actually should. But the reason why this ride is so broken is not actually because people are likely to get on it. No, no, no. People are probably never going to ride this thing because it simply looks too intense. But this ride is absolutely broken because its excitement rating is off the chart. Sure, it takes a straight 13 minutes to actually do, which is equivalent to probably about three months in game to actually ride this thing. But because of its incredible quantity of excitement, that means that our park value has gone from being just about 30,000 to instead being about 485,000. That's right, our park is almost worth half a million simply because this ride exists. Not because we have a whole bunch of money in our account, but just because this one ride has such a stupidly high excitement rating. So let's save this track design. And now that we have it actually saved, we can place it down as many times as we like. And the best thing is every time we build another one of these, we add another 400,000 to our park value. And that is how, ladies and gentlemen, you can basically beat almost every single mission in the game with this one ride. This ride basically works because if it's superly high excitement rating, will increase your park value to stupid levels. Meaning if you ever have a mission which is, requires you to reach a set amount of park value, well, this is the ride for you. It's completely and utterly busted. And I love it. Equally, this ride can sometimes glitch out and cause a stupidly large influx of guests to just appear in your park. And it basically has about a 1 in 10 chance of happening, but if you place down enough of these bad boys, you might suddenly go from a park of 150 guests to a park of 3,000 guests. They'll just appear out of thin air. Just because the opportunity of this level of excitement is too much for anyone to pass up. Anyway, whilst we're busy increasing our park value, I should probably get some more money into my account. And of course, the way you do that is by getting yourself one of these lovely cheatsy rides, which just splurges a whole bunch of invisible goo across the map. And then we delete that same goo for fantastical profits. There we go. Look at all the money just flow on into my accounts. Ah, oh, it's perfect. And would you look at that? There we go. We're now up to 126,000. One of my favorite signs of this game's age is that when you hop into the options of the game, you can actually change around the currencies from pounds to dollars to Deutschmark and Lira. Well, yes, you haven't really seen those currencies in a very long time. Now, of course, roller coaster tycoon games are a real favorite of mine. There's a whole bunch of reasons as to why. I think there's just something quite charming and endearing about convincing people to go on a ride, which just moments before they actually boarded it, flew off of its own rails and murdered a queue of 14 civilians. Roller coaster games are the only games where you can have a roller coaster produce enough lateral G force to separate skin from the human body. And so for that reason, these games truly are something special. Day two. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now that we've showed off how to get effectively infinite money as well as infinite park value, I'll now be showing off how to get theoretically infinite guests, or at least make it so that your park never has anyone leave. It's exceedingly easy to do and causes some very silly outcomes. But of course, you'll already notice a difference. This game is looking slightly better than it was before. That's because we're running the brand new Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, meaning we're actually running at 1080p, if you can believe it. Oh my goodness, look at these glorious high quality graphics. This can even run at 4K, and most importantly, it's even got multiplayer support. That's right, you could play with up to 69 friends on a Roller Coaster Tycoon server. It's brilliant. It's absolutely amazing this community is still going. It's not quite as large and as active as the Open TTD community, but I mean, that's because it's Open TTD, the greatest game in existence, whereas this is just one of the greatest games in existence. So anyway, let's jump into a park and I'll be showing off how exactly to destroy your guest's sense of free will and how to effectively keep them trapped into a rather stylish cardboard box for the remainder of their existence. So let's start a new park. We're actually going to grab one of these existing parks here. These are real parks, you see. We're going to grab the Six Flags Magic Mountain here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, look at this wonderful park. Immediately, we start out with £10,000 in the bank. That's wonderful. And a park value of £800,000. Oh, it's lovely. And there's 2,782 guests here. Oh, isn't that just wonderful? Now, you will notice a joyous thing about these Six Flags Magic Mountain is 
that we have a lovely entrance right here and inside our park it's just alive and bustling with activity. We've got little people walking around with balloons over here like good old Kev M who, you know, we're actually going to just drop inside this water feature to die. Sorry Kev M, rest in peace, Kev M has drowned. <laughs> Does that affect the park rating? Nope, not at all really. Just like a real park, you can get away with murdering a couple of guests. I'm talking about you, Blackpool Pleasure Beach. <laughs> God damn, that thing's a death trap. But no, welcome to our lovely park. Now in our lovely park, we're able to do some pretty evil things. You see, here are the park entrance gates. The entrance to Six Flags Mountain, our actual park, which will be renamed to, of course, a much greater name. Welcome to our new park of Purgatory. Now Purgatory, just like the real thing, costs about £45 to enter. No, no, let's change that. We're going to make Purgatory a little bit cheaper. We're going to lower the price to £20. Now, you might be instantly panicking, thinking, well, Spiff, if you lower the park price to £20 and guests don't have to pay to get on these rides, how are you going to be making your money? Well, we're going to be making our money via selling foods and drinks in our lovely foods and drinks dispensaries. We've got a whole bunch of them scattered around and they're absolutely lovely. Now, you see, guests, they have their needs and their needs are very simple. They have a happiness meter, an energy meter, and once they've been in the park for a long time, they'll need to get something to drink and something to eat. And then once they satisfy those needs, they'll walk around the park or they might even decide to go home. Like these people here. Who's this? Rolf M is leaving the park. He's had enough. He's had a lovely day here, but that's it. He's gone and seen all the rides he wanted to see. I mean, that's fine. He spent £54 in the park, but we wanted him to really spend more. You see, technically these park guests have an unlimited supply of money, provided you give them enough ATMs. But if we really want them to get spending more, then we need to keep them here for longer, because currently most guests come into the park, they do all of the rides, they get a drink and a snack, and then they leave. But what if they could never leave? Then they're going to be stuck in the park as effectively a captive audience. They'll never be able to leave, and they'll be continuously supplying us with their infinite wealth. Well, how on earth would we do that? Well, it's quite simple. Just simply hop into the scenery section and go over to the signs and footpaths section. And now we have access to, oh my goodness, look at this, signs, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we've got two lovely signs. Aren't they just fantastic? Now these two signs, we can do whatever we like with them, but we're going to close this sign here and make it a no entry sign. And then we're going to select this sign here and also make it a no entry sign. There we go, fantastic. Now there is technically no exit to the park because in this game's enlightened design, if a player puts down a no entry sign like this one here, the lovely plebs walking around the park will never question that sign. They will never leave because they believe that the almighty park dictator has decided that what is beyond that sign must never be entered. But of course these signs are one way, meaning people can still enter the park like good old Chip who just walked in, but people can never leave. Here comes Avon K. Avon K is wandering right up to our park gates. He's having a lovely time. Technically if we wanted to be cheeky we can deliberately inflate the admission price and because he's already spawned into the world he'll pay it anyway. But there we go. Avon K is going to walk into the park, give us his £20, and now he can never leave. There is simply no way for him to escape. His life has come to an end. Oh my, there's about six guests all wandering into the park right now. Now this is brilliant because effectively, the only way that guest numbers can go is up, and the guests themselves will also be exceedingly satisfied. You might be wondering why. Well, it's because we'll be able to keep on top of all of the guests' needs. The guests will need to go to the toilet, but that's fine. We have restrooms here, which we can charge for. Now, if you want to go to the toilet, it's going to cost you one pound. And I'd like to see you find anywhere else to go to the toilet because the only place is beyond the gates of purgatory itself. And I'm afraid those gates aren't opening for anyone. So now we're going to be generating hundreds of pounds per hour from the toilets and thousands of pounds per hour from the very expensive burger bars. Because now the park of purgatory has become your only source of food and existence. There is nowhere to sleep unless you count the lazy river ride. But even then, the lazy river ride will cost you at least two kidneys by the time you eventually run out of money. Let's move to Turbo Speed, which is a fine addition. Ah, look at the money increase, isn't that just glorious? Oh, look at all the money, look at it just go up, and all the guests as well. We're only gaining guests because guests can never leave, and what's that? We just received an award? 1st of May, your park has received an award for the park with the best custom designed rides. There we go, we've received a reward. <laughs> we've received an award. I kind of feel sorry for whoever's had to walk around the park to actually approve of our award because I mean surely they must have sent say I don't know a VIP person whose job it is to come in here and assess the rides and they're never going to actually be able to leave so maybe the reviewer has decided to give us a positive rating just so that we actually allow them to leave. You know what I'm feeling generous I found a, a guest over here it's RT Game of course now he spent about 60 pounds in our park which is lovely he's been on so many rides basically all of our rides multiple times as well he spent nine hours in the park 
which is incredible. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually allow him to leave. We're going to pick him up and we're going to drop him outside of the walls of the park. Oh no, we actually can't even do that. Oh no, Artie Game can never leave. Artie Game's trapped in the park. I thought we could at least pick people up and put them the other side of the sign, but no, I'd have to move the sign forward. Oh no, poor Artie Game, you're trapped in purgatory forever now. Does that mean I get to own his channel? Is that how this works? Yeah, probably. Oh my god, there are people who've been in the park for over 13 hours now. Imagine being in a park for over half a day. Oh, they're going to be in here for the rest of their lives, aren't they? 13 hours and 13 minutes, they, they're never going to leave. I mean, effectively, the people who've been in the park have been in the park since I actually started on this game, which was probably the 4th of March, and we're now in June, and no one has left the park since March. So people have basically been in this park for about four months now, and they haven't been able to leave. They've just been enjoying mandatory fun time. Ah, oh, yes, it's exactly how I want my, all of my parks to run. You know, I feel like I need to set up a Kickstarter and make my own theme park. I think it's a perfect idea. I would call it Spifftopia. Or maybe Spiff Ventures. Yeah, Spiff Ventures the Kickstarter. Now, of course, in my Spiff Ventures Kickstarter, I would run off with all of the money, but I'd run off with all the money, build a very small park, invite all of the people who donated to the Kickstarter, and then trap them in that park with a big no-entry sign that technically they could walk under or go through, but they would never do so because that would be against the park rules, and you don't want to go against the park rules. And so all of the people who would complain and not believe that they got their money were for the Kickstarter would be permanently silenced for they would be trapped in the Spiff Ventures purgatory. Ah, now that's my IRL infinite money exploit and it is a good one. <laughs> oh god I'm evil. Anyway ladies and gentlemen I think that's all for me today. What a fantastic day this has been. But hey if you want to see more Roller Coaster Tycoon exploits then be sure to give me a shout. Of course there's the legendary Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and more modern releases like Planet Coaster which I'm sure are absolutely rife of exploits just waiting to be discovered. Now personally for me the best thing about the Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 community and the Roller Coaster Tycoon community in general is that it's still going. There's a channel which I've been binging a lot as of late, which is called Marcel Voss, which is a guy who is effectively trying to find the most optimum way of playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. This includes creating rides which last literally seconds and generate stupid amounts of profit. We're talking about a ride design which people will willingly pay £20 to get on, will last two seconds, and then they immediately get off of it. Imagine that, you're literally throwing £20 pounds to just get flung around in your seat once and then you hop on off but according to this game's statistical way of calculating things it was the most exciting thing you've ever experienced. But yes there's a whole bunch of crazy things out there being created by crazy people so be sure to keep your eyes open for them. If you're new here then do consider subscribing and if you want to try and break this game for yourself then you can grab yourself a copy on Steam or go for the open source version. The choice is yours. As always a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Thank you very much for your continued support. And if you enjoyed what you've seen here today, then feel free to like the video. And if you're wondering what you'd like to watch next, well, guess what? I've actually lined up a couple of creative choices which I've created myself, which I know you're going to absolutely love. Or in the very least, you have no choice and you must absolutely love these creations, because the psychotropics that I've slipped into your tea should be taking effect just about now. So enjoy.